So I do Strouder v. West Virginia um, to show you that not all decisions during this era um, were legally wrong, but all decisions during this era were bad. Because this is a circumstance where the court gets it right, but man, do they get it right for the wrong reasons. So in, in this case, um, an individual who was... Um, convicted of murder in the state of West Virginia, Strouder, a black man, uh, was convicted by an all-white jury in the state of West Virginia. And he attempted to move his case um, to the federal court system, and that, and that was denied. So the state law in West Virginia provided that only white males, uh, 21 and over, were able to serve as jurors. Um, and so the, the question is, in this case, does that law of West Virginia violate the 14th Amendment? And the answer is the court gives us that, yes, it absolutely does. There, there's this, this law um, violates the Equal Protection Clause because uh, black males and white males are treated differently in the law. And that very clearly is a violation of equal protection. So Justice Strong um, writes the opinion for the court and says that this law um, it is discriminatory against African Americans. It's a stamp of inferiority and it violates the Equal Protection Clause. Um, good. They got it right. But man, do they get it right for the wrong reasons. Here's the reason that Justice Strong gives for why African Americans need African Americans on the jury. So the reason why juries should include um, African-Americans. Blacks are, quote, abject and ignorant. So they need to be on a jury since the Constitution provides that there should be a jury of your peers. So the 14th Amendment applies but also there's a necessity within the constitution that African-Americans should sit on juries of fellow African-Americans because by the reasoning of justice uh, strong, African-Americans are so dumb that it would never be a jury of their peers unless you included other African-Americans. So even during this era, when the court gets it right in terms of the outcome of the decision, Man, do they really, really get it wrong. But of course, the court doesn't stop there because there should be a big glaring uh, thing that's going on right now is the law in West Virginia said that only white males over the age of 21 could be jerks. It would seem to be missing a whole entire gender in that inclusion. Well, the court weighs in and says, well, this isn't a constitutional problem. Confining a jury to the selection of males is is just tradition and, and ways in that females don't a want to serve on juries and b aren't qualified to serve on juries um, because they they simply um, are a fairer race that has at their cause um, home faring as their duty and so the fact that this law discriminates on the basis of gender that's that's not a problem but the fact that it discriminates on the basis of of race that violates the 14th Amendment. We'll come back to this issue when we get to the section on gender, and we'll see that very clearly the 14th Amendment does apply to distinctions on the basis of gender, um, but not in 1880. Um, and, and we need to remember that even though decisions like this can seem progressive, they were not made by progressives. Um, that the language in this case is as problematic as the language in Dred Scott and as problematic as the language in Plessy. And despite the fact that the decision did comply with a regular understanding of the 14th Amendment, the reason for getting there was racism, plain and simple.